Hey guys, today we are going to look at function notation with equations. We're going to answer the question, how do I evaluate a function equation and function notation, and how do I find the input when given the output? So function notation, what is that? It is a way to show what the process between the input and the output of a function is. This right here reads as f of x. Those parentheses mean of. Where the name of the function is f, and x is the input, and the entire f of x is the output. So you will see that letter change right there depending on the name of the function, and then whatever is inside the parentheses is the input, and then this whole thing is the output. Since the whole thing is the output, it is the same as y. So y and f of x are interchangeable. So you'll see equations represented two ways in algebra. You'll see y equals 2x plus 4 and f of x equals 2x plus 4. They're the same thing. The benefit of using this is that you can name equations. So if you're comparing two equations, you could call one of them f of x and then another one g of x. So that's why you'll start seeing function notation. So here's a little diagram to help you Remember the basics of function notation. So all of f of x right here is the same as y. Since it's the same as y, it means all of those Roy D values, range, output, the y values, or the dependent variable. And all of f of x is the output. Sometimes people will just think that f is the output, or sometimes people will think it's just f, x. It is this entire thing. Okay, and then x, if you notice, that's what's inside the parentheses and it's our input in the function over here. So inside the parentheses is the input. And it is all of those Dixie values, domain, independent, x values, and input. Okay, so let's look at these. If f of x equals 2x plus 4, then find the value of f of 9. So they told us to find f of 9. They gave us the number inside the parentheses, so that means that they gave us the input. And since they gave us an input, that means that we are finding an output. Another way we know we're finding an output is because it says find f of something. Remember, f of something is the output, so that's what we're finding. And then it says, what are you replacing in the function when finding f of 9? So if you notice, they replaced x with 9. So that means in the function, I'm going to replace that x with 9. So it says, what are you replacing in the function when finding f of 9? We replace x with 9. So now let's find the value of f of 9. So f of x equals 2x plus 4. So to find f of 9, I'll replace all the x's with 9. So f of 9 equals 2 times 9 plus 4. 2 times 9 is 18, and 18 plus 4 is 22. So f of 9 equals 22. Okay, I have my calculator pulled up now for this next one. It is the same function if f of x equals 2x plus 4, then find the value of x when f of x equals 9. So this time they are telling us to find x, which is the input value, and they gave me f of x equals 9. They gave me f of x, they gave me the output. And since they gave me the output, they're asking me to find x, the input. And it says, what are you replacing in the function when finding x when f of x equals 9? We are replacing f of x with 9, since that's what it equals. We're replacing f of x with 9. And now it wants us to find the value of x when f of x equals 9. So I'm going to write down the original function. It was f of x equals 2x plus 4. I'm going to replace 
f of x with 9. And now I've set up an equation and I can solve for x. I'm going to subtract 4 and we get 5 equals 2x. So that means that x equals 2.5 or 5 halves. All right, next one, they gave us g of x equals 1.5x minus 10. So g, it's just a different function. We're not using that same function anymore, so they changed the name of it. g of x equals 1.5x minus 10. Find the value of g of 10. That means I'm going to replace what's inside the parentheses x with 10. So g of 10 will be 1.5 times 10 minus 10. And you can calculate this by hand or just type it in the calculator, which is what I'm gonna do. 1.5 times 10 minus 10 is five. So G of 10 equals five. All right, and now on this next one, it wants us to find the value of x if g of x equals 5. So they gave us the output and it's telling me find x. That's how I know I'm finding an input. So I'm going to replace all of g of x with 5. So it'll be 5 equals 1.5x minus 10. And now I'm just going to solve this equation to find x. So I would add 10 to both sides and I get 15 equals 1.5x, and then we divide by 1.5, and 15 divided by 1.5 is 10. Okay, next one, a different function. f of x equals 2x minus 12 all over 3. They want us to find the value of f of negative 15. So I'm going to replace what's inside the parentheses or x with negative 15. So to find f of negative 15, we will do two times negative 15 minus 12 all over three. And I'm just gonna let my calculator do the work. Just make sure that you put all of that top number in the numerator, two times negative 15 minus 12 all divided by three is negative 14. So f of negative 15 equals negative 14. Okay, next one, they want us to find the value of x if f of x equals nine. So I'm finding the input this time, they gave me the output f of x and they want me to replace that with nine. So I get nine equals two x minus 12 all divided by three. So now I just need to solve this equation. I'm trying to get x by itself. That whole side of the equation is being divided by three, so I'm gonna undo that first by doing the opposite of that, which is multiplying by three. And I get 27 equals two x minus 12. And then I'm gonna add 12. And I get, gonna come up here, 39 equals 2x, and then we divide by 2, and 39 divided by 2 is 19.5. Okay, next one, b of x equals negative x plus 8, and it wants us to find the value of x if b of x equals negative 10. So they gave us the output, b of x, and they want us to set that equal to negative 10 so that we can find x. So the equation I'm gonna use is negative 10 equals negative x plus eight. So all I have to do is solve for x here. I would subtract eight and get negative 18 equals negative x and then divide by that invisible negative one, and I get 18 equals x. Okay, then on number 11, it says find the value of b of negative eight. So they want us to replace what's inside the parentheses with negative eight. So b 
of negative 8 will equal negative times negative 8 plus 8. We are just replacing x with what's inside the parentheses. That negative is not a part of the x, so make sure you still keep it like that. So a negative times a negative is a positive, so this really ends up becoming positive 8 plus 8. So that means that b of negative 8 equals 16. Okay, and last one, it wants us to find the range given the domain negative 1, 2, and 5. So domain and range are numbers that we talked about last time. Range is the output. So h of x, and then domain is the input. So just the x values. So they're wanting us to find three different numbers here. We're going to input negative 1, 2, and 5 into this function, and then we will find the output with it. And I find the easiest way to do this is with a table. So I'll put my x values over here, which are negative 1, 2, and 5. And I'm going to plug them into our function h of x equals 3x squared minus 7. And then that will give me my range values or my output, my h of x values. So let's start with negative 1. We are going to replace x with these values here. So I'm going to do 3 times negative 1 squared minus 7. Make sure that you put your negative numbers in parentheses with the squared outside of them in the calculator or the calculator will do it incorrectly. So 3 parentheses negative 1 goes on the inside with the square on the outside minus 7 and we get negative 4. So there's the first range value negative 4. And then the next one is 3 times 2 squared minus 7. 3 times 2 squared minus 7 is 5. And then 3 times 5 squared minus 7 is 68. So the range values that they were asking for here that match those domain values are negative 4, 5, and 68.